Hello and welcome to this tutorial. My name is Miguel and in this video we will continue our journey with developing a game. So in the last days um, we did some yeah, kind of theory of functions and procedures and also how to use um, important tools like the debugger. So I think from beginner it's time to get some fun back and therefore I decided to develop a small game actually this Pong game. So this will be a retro style game. Um, you can control the pedal with your mouse. Um, there's a score in the top right. <laughs> oh god. Okay. There was a score in the top right corner. Or is a score in the top right corner. Um, the speed will increase after every hit. We also have a small game over screen and you can restart the game. I will also show a cool demonstration or a cool presentation better to um, illustrate the collision detection with a cool animation. I hope you like it. So see you in the developing section. So let's get started. First of all, we need to create a new project. Therefore, open that source, go to project, close project, new project, application. Before we start coding, I would like to drop some new components. Um, I would like to use a T-shape for my pedal and my ball. So let's add a new one. I'm not sure about the correct size, maybe something like this. And another T-shape for my ball. Let's make it something like 20 multiplied by 20. You can even set the shape to ST circle, but in this game, I will use a rectangle to make it more good old fashioned. Okay. Moreover, I need a label for my um, score. So let's add a new label and put it in the top right corner. I would also like to disable auto size, make it a bit bigger and then set the alignment to TA right justify. We can also change the score to score something like zero. The font to a more good old fashioned font. Um, let me use my console font. What was it called? Um, this one and let's set the size. I'm not sure 12 14 Maybe 14 the style to FS bolt Let's make it a bit bigger Oh, no, this is good and the color to CL white Okay And yeah in the next video, I would like to show something about an auto sizing layout. So a layout, which is responsive on different screen sizes. Um, so I will keep this at the current stage really simple. There is something called anchors. And what we can do is we can set AK right and AK top. So disable AK left and now this label will stay on the right side of the screen. More about this in the next tutorial. So actually I need another label. So let's copy this, put this into the center, make it full screen size and enable AK left, AK right and AK top. Set the alignment to TA center and write something down like game over. We could also set the font size to so maybe 24 and we disabled auto size. So don't forget to make the form bigger. What else do I need? I need basically the same component and let's make it smaller, something like 14 maybe. And what we can do, oops, what we can do is we can rename it to restart. This will be our restart label. I will not use a button because I think a button will destroy the kind of art of the game. 
Okay, I think this looks great. So what we can do is we can select our form and set the background color to CL black. Great. Okay. Now we could start by renaming our component. So let's go to our pedal and rename it to pedal ball and what else? LBL score. Um, LBL game over and LBL restart. Moreover, I would like, I would like to rename my form. So the caption to something like retro pong. Okay. So let's save this project, go to save all. And then you can create a new folder. It's, I think, tutorial 12. And let's call this project Pong. Unit 1 is just fine. Okay, so what can we do now? Let me just think. I think we should start with the movement of our pedal. I would like to control my pedal using the mouse. Therefore, I have to react when I'm, when I'm using my mouse or moving my mouse on the form. And there's a, an event called on mouse move. And this event fires every time when you move the mouse on an object, in this case on the form. So let's write down something like control pedal, press enter. And now we have a new um, procedure. Okay, this procedure has some really important parameters. Really important for us is the X and Y coordinate, actually only the X coordinate. Now we can say something like pedal left equals X and pedal top equals um, client height minus pedal height minus maybe two. Client height is the area of my form, the height area, minus pedal height is the height of my pedal, minus two is just a small um, placeholder. And now my um, pedal should move with my mouse and always stick to the bottom of my form, like this. When I make it bigger, it resize it. But it's not so correct because it's now aligned to the left and I would like to align the pedal to the center of my mouse. And therefore I have to do something like minus pedal with division by two. When you use div, it's an integer division and already rounded. So you don't have to use round. And again, it works, but when I'm moving on my pedal, it's kind of laggy because the event is only fired on the form and not on the pedal. So what we can do is we can go into this pedal and create another on mouse move. We cannot select the existing procedure because the coordinate and um, the coordinates will be relative to our component. So when we move our mouse on the pedal, X will be relative to the position of my pedal. So what we need to do is we need to call our uh, main, yeah, our main movement by doing something like control pedal and then just giving our parameters and X equals to X plus pedal left and Y equals to Y plus pedal top. And now we should be able to even control the pedal when moving over yeah, the pedal. Okay. So the next thing is, I think we should start with some procedures. Therefore, we need some variables. We have in score, we have in kind of speed, and that's basically it. 
So let's add some new variables we could edit in our class or even in the public section of our unit. So let's use the unit and let's add in score. The score is an integer. Let's add in speed x and speed y. And this is also an integer. Now we also need to initialize these variables. So let's create a new, let's say public, I mean, we could do it private. So let's create a new private procedure in it for initialize um, game. And now we can say something like score equals zero and speed x equals two and speed y also equals two. Okay. So the next game, um, we also, when we initialize the game, we should also make game over and restart invisible. So let's say LBL game over, visible false and LBL restart visible false. Okay. Now we also need in procedure to update the score. This procedure will just say LBL label score, caption equals score plus into string V score. Okay. So what we can do is we can just say update score. Okay. Now we can get the movement of our ball. So therefore I will use, uh, but before we start, another thing we also have to execute initialize game at the start of the application. So go to your form and on create and then call initialize game. Moreover, I would like to set double buffered of true to true because um, this is better for movement, but I don't want to give more information about what double buffered actually does because um, I think you can easily find it in the internet. It would be too much right now. Okay, so let's use in timer for the movement and let's rename this timer to TMR game and let's set the time, I'm not sure, maybe something like 50. Now we can go into on timer and double click and we can write something down like um, ball left equals ball left plus speed x. Ball top equals ball top plus speed y. And this will now make our ball move. Bits not so fast. Maybe we should use something like four, but let's make negative numbers to illustrate the first problem. Okay. The first problem is that our ball is moving, but just does not care what happens. So we kind of have to do a basic collision detection. Let me just change the time to 25. This is better. And in basic collision detection of an edge of our form. So what we can do is basically we can say something like if pedal left is smaller or equal zero, you can don't need the space right here. Maybe it's better to understand it. Then speed x equals minus speed x. This is helpful. Okay. Uh, if pedal not, I'm sorry, not. Oh, I have written it in this uh, wrong <laughs> procedure. I'm sorry. Um, in the timer, obviously, and it's ball left, something like this. Now we have to do the same stuff with um, the top. So if ball top is zero or a negative number, then speed y should be negative speed y. 
obviously we have another problem because now the ball will um, leave our right screen so when I okay and this does not help so what we need to do is we not only need to t we need to take a look at the right border of our screen so if ball left is bigger or equal or equals the client width client width of our form then I would also like to invert the X speed okay that's actually really simple we could even make a game over but not now because I would like to show you a small presentation of our collision detection because this could be a bit complicated and I just want that everybody understands it. So I'm back with the presentation soon. Okay, so I made this small presentation. It just has one page but a really cool animation and I hope you like it. This presentation should illustrate the problem of our collision detection. So basically we have our pedal and imperfect it would be when the ball hits our pedal directly in the center. For instance, from the top left to the top right. But in programming, we do not care about the perfect case. What we need to do is, we basically need to define our problem. In this case, we have to define a collision. And therefore, we could define a collision as something between the most left and the most right collision could be invalid collision. Okay, the most left collision would be something like this. It's still an invalid collision and to better understand how we could define it, we should take a look at our ball. This ball has a left position and a width. And now we could describe this collision as ball left plus ball width equals pedal left. Okay, so this will just be the most left hit. And now we can do it the other way around and take a look at the most right hit. It would be something like this. So again, quite simple, we have to just turn it around. So ball left equals pedal left plus pedal width. Now we can take a look at both of these conditions and put them together in an if statement, but we have to create an area. So in collision, so basically it says in collision is something between the most left and the most right hit. And this is basically our collision. It's a really simple collision. So you can kind of glitch it because you cannot hit something with the left side and then it would kind of bounce off the pedal. But I think this will be good enough for our game. Okay. Okay, so let's get back. Um, I would like to make it a bit better better here. And there's, there's a problem here. Yeah, there there should be an or because we should we would like to check the left border and the right border and the right border could also be better to write something like this okay so now we can check whether our collision is valid so if ball left plus ball width is bigger or equals pedal left and ball left is smaller or equals pedal left plus pedal width. Now we don't have an valid collision because we also have to check the y coordinate. So if ball top is bigger or equal, not ball top plus ball height is bigger or equals pedal top then we have our collision. Now we should also take a look when we have a game over situation. This would be 
if ball top plus ball height is bigger or equals the client height of our form, then create a game over. And game over does not exist. So let's create a new private procedure. Game over. Press Control Shift C to create it. And let's do it later on. So we could paste in to do note. To do so, just press Control Shift T and write something like create game over screen. Okay. And there's a window, go to view, to do. And this window shows all your to-do list. And when you click on an item, you directly get to the line. This could be really helpful. Okay. Now let's take a look at our collision. What we can do is basically just say speed y should be minus speed y. Okay. And let's take a look whether it works. Great. So what else do we have to do in a case of a collision? We have to increase the score. We have to update the score and we have to increase the speed. Okay. Great. So let's increase the score and update it. You could write something down like score equals score plus one or make it simple. Just write increase score and then use update score. This um, procedure also has a second parameter and there you could write something like two. Now it would increase by two, but I don't like that. Okay, now we need to increase our speed. And yeah, we kind of have to increase it before we make it negative because um, here the speed will be negative but we can even make it a bit more clean and write down a new procedure like increase speed. And now we can do something like if um, speed X is bigger than zero. So it's a, whether if it's in positive number, then let's increase the speed. But it could also be negative number. And in this case, we have to decrease the speed. To make it faster. And now let's do the same with speed y. Okay, how did I make that? I selected the line and now you could press this button and then you can tap to variables and when you rename an identifier then everything will rename. But there's also a shortcut for this therefore press Control J and then when you rename it it will rename everywhere. Okay, good to know. So let's just call um, increase speed. Okay, I think this looks great. So let's test whether it works. I think we should also set, yeah, this looks great. Yeah, and it's getting faster. Okay, so now let's um, create our game over situation and I would like to do something different. I would also like to set positive numbers for the beginning. And I would also like to reset the ball left position to something like 10 and ball top position also to 10. Great. So now let's create a game over situation. Basically, we have to stop our game. So let's call our tam timer and set enable to false. Now we can set label score, not label score, label game over, enable true and label we start not enabled, actually visible true. Now this these components will be visible. When we read, yeah, okay, we already did. 
So let's test whether this works. And great. Okay. Now let's write a cool procedure. Um, let's make a small effect for the game over. Therefore, I would like to make it. Is it already bold? Let's do not make it bold. And I would like to uh, make it bold when you hover your mouse on it. So let's go to mouse enter on the label and then write something down like LBL restart font style and now in brackets font style bold. Yeah, the ba um, why the brackets basically because you can put more identifiers or yeah, something like um, FS italic, but we will learn about this kind of structure later. So and on mouse leave we also have to LBL restart and now font style and empty brackets. Okay when we restart our game I would also like to reset this style to empty. So that should be it. Now I also need to restart the game. So let's go on, on click, double click and just call restart. Where was it? Oh, no, initialize game. Yep. So let's make one hit to take a look whether our score will reset. Now we have this um, kind of bold effect and in initialize game, we also have to enable the timer. So let's go to the bottom and then say TMR game enabled true. We can also disable it at design time. Okay, what else could we do? I think this is pretty good. Let me just think whether I forgot something. No, I think this is something really playable. Okay. So, last but not least, we could set up our build modes I think, yeah, I mean, this looks great, okay? So let's go to project, project options, debugging, build modes, enable it, and create release and debug mode. Let's go into the release mode. Why? Just again, take a look at the tutorial um, debugger because our executable is really big. It's containing debugger symbols and we don't need them. So let's go to clean up and build press delete and now we will, we will create a clean build of our executable. Okay, I think this is pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope that you learned something and had some fun. I also hope that you like my, um, yeah, my presentation. You could also set the brush and then there's another property we could set um, brush style. No, style is good. Okay. Pen, pen, and then set the pen to write CL white. This is better because now the shapes do not have a border. Okay. Yeah, I think this is all. I wanted to show um, when you play on a full screen mode, then you have an advantage because you have more time to deal with your game. You could disable it by going to form and then from border style to 
something like be a single disable maximize I think something like this and now it's not possible to resize the form okay I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned something and see you in the next video if you like this video you can subscribe or check out my website it's also possible to download this project from my website and also sub subscribe to my email newsletter. Yeah, see you in the next video. Bye.